May 29 Transition Concerns as Buhari government passes on 446 trillion naira debts to Sudanbu. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. President Muhammad Buhari will pass on the 46.225 trillion naira debt burden to the incoming government. According to the Debt Management Office, DMO, Nigeria's debt stock has hit 46 trillion. Daily Post report that despite the dust already caused by the heavy existing debt burden, the government said it has received approval for the one bank on another 369 billion naira loan ahead of the first subsidy removal in June 2023. In the eight years of the Buhari administration, Nigeria's debt profile has grown from 12.6 trillion naira in 2015 to over 46 trillion naira in 2023. The situation has continued to raise physical worries, especially as the International Monetary Fund, IMF, said Nigeria almost emptied its treasury on debt servicing in 2022. The Federal Inland Revenue said it collected 10 trillion naira in revenue in 2022, and with a 2023 project expenditure of 21.83 trillion pegged on deficits of 11.34 trillion naira. The issue of debt sustainability and economic instability currently chokes Nigeria without hope. On those ground, with the onerous tax of surmounting the country's economic challenges would be shouldered by Tirumbu after his swearing in on May 29, 2023. However, economic experts said fixing Nigeria's debt burden the economy would be a hard nut to crack. Speaking with Daily Post on Monday, Prof. Bongo Adi a professor of economics at the Lagos Business School said the debt incurred by the Harris government had mortgaged the future of a country through heavy obligations. According to him, the coming days will be difficult for the Nigerian economy because Buhari has left the country broke. However, he suggested that the only viable option is for the incoming government to seek loan renegotiation as it is a practice internationally, provided the government has credibility. With such a colossal debt, Burden without apparent means of repayment, the already unsustainable debt prefer undermines physical sustainability no matter what the next government will do. There is another borrowing spree of $800 million from the World Bank without how to pay back. They are taking advantage of borrowing to share among themselves as they want to exist because they know nobody will hold them to account. There is nothing else to talk about. Nigeria is broke. The coming days are not going to be nice at all because if you look at the horizon with this kind of debt, we are not bleeding only from the financial side but from all ramifications. Medical doctors and professionals of all cadres are leaving. So who will create the money to pay back the loans? The factors that drive economic activities are fast depleting. So when they go on accumulating loans, they endanger the lives of everybody. Based on the way it is, today's situation is better than what we will see in the incoming days. They are handling over a dead economy to Tulumbu, and I do not know which magic he would perform. The World Bank advice has never helped Nigeria or a developing country. There is nothing they will tell you that will work. The only thing I can tell you is to renegotiate a debt. However, for anyone to listen, there must be credibility. Now, will the incoming government assemble credible indiv individuals? The most important thing is to give young Nigerians hope to stay in the country but then, you have to stabilize the economy and security. Every country invests in the youth, but that is not the situation in Nigeria. Who is, so, who would grow the economy? The priority of the coming government should be how to find creative ways to assure the youth of hope in Nigeria, he stated. Also, Dr. Ayo Tereba, an economic expert and the chief executive officer of the Economic Associate, said the era of Buhari's government was not a transition from the income-based debt management into an assets-based debt management model. He disclosed that to ensure sustainability, the incoming government must learn from the mistake of Bahari's government by borrowing against assets and not income. He said this was what Brazil and India did to attract foreign direct investment into their countries. He called on Nigeria to support the call for the incoming government to focus on equity equity financing rather than debts to grow the economy. The current administration will be eight years and about five weeks. The era of omission they committed is not transiting from the income-based model of debt management to the asset-based model of debt management. 
They replaced the government that enjoyed an income boom from commodity prices. And on our average oil price per barrel had always been way below 100 per barrel. But the Buhari economy faced declining revenue. It continued borrowing as such. Towards the end of the administration, debt costs rose as high as the, econ as the revenue. It is frightening the physical outlook of a country and, by that, and that by the time you pay interest on them, you will not have anything left. The Buhari administration would have changed our borrowing model, but it not also because they kept hoping the oil price would increase. The incoming government has learned a lot from the mistake of Buhari. Going forward, the incoming should borrow against assets, not against income. For example, Saudi Arabia and Malaysia did the same thing. I expect the incoming administration will not issue the same instrument as Buhari government did. Nigeria should move to asset-based borrowing. In the process, unlock revenue for both investors. Nigeria has options. The country is blessed with a lot of assets. Well, anything to make Nigeria better, let them not forget that they are not coming to try. We want to hope that the incoming administration are coming in with, you know, readable ways to solve or readable solutions to solve Nigeria's problems. All right, so this month we've come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of your day.